Hello there folks, Spunky Cook here, aka your Lonely Achievement God, and I'm coming at you with an achievement guide for Remote Life, published by Rattle Ica Games and developed by Mario Malagrino. And next game level. It was initially released on the 27th of May of 2022. For, and is purchasable for a price of $18.99. Of course, your currency may vary by your region. Um, it is not one of the easy Red Alaika titles. Uh, it's a 2 to 1 ratio currently on True Achievements. Only 35 of the 268 people who have started it have finished it. Uh, you're looking at approximately three to four hours. There are 18 achievements for 1000G. All of the achievements are simply for beating levels, so it is just a matter of playing through the entire game and you'll get your 1000G. And it's a left or right shmup. Uh, you can look at, at the design of the start screen here. It's actually a, a fairly well-designed game. It looks pretty good. Um, enemies and obstacles for the most part, differentiate themselves from the backgrounds, which is always important in a shmup. There is uh, not a lot of the bullet hell type projectiles, but you do run into, especially on the later levels, a ton of things going on at once. So it's good that you can differentiate, differentiate what's able to attack you and what's in the background. Um, you're probably looking three to four hours to get the 1000G, but... If you're really good and finish all the levels on your first run, you could get this done in as little as two hours. Uh, most of the levels take between six to ten minutes to complete uh, because you're you're scrolling at a set pace. You don't really have any control on how quickly you finish a level because you're you're following along with the side scrolling. Um, there are th two or three levels that are not side scrolling and they're kind of maze levels where you have to destroy, um, I don't know if they're cores or something like that, um, a certain amount of them before you can get to the boss and defeat the boss. 90% of the levels have a boss at the end, um, and I have strategies for helping you get through the bosses. Uh, I do want to make a quick note of this. Um, all 18 of the achievements are just for completing the game, so I have recorded successful runs of all of the levels in the game. However, there is no commentary with them. Um, I was just reporting, recording my gameplay while I went through the game my first time. So what I've done is uh, I've dropped a link in the description to the website page and the text that I have uh, typed up for each level that gives a little bit of the strategy that I used for the level and what enemies you may want to look out for as you're going through. Um, most of the levels are just a matter of learning where enemies are, which is why I recommend uh, taking a look at the videos, maybe at two times speed even, just to get uh, an idea for what you're going to be running into as you go through the level. Um, there are some obstacles that follow the old school gaming style where if you're not aware that it's going to happen, an enemy is going to come off the screen and plow into you and there's nothing you can do. If you don't know that enemy is there, you're probably going to get hit by it. So there are things like that. There are occasionally split paths where going up or down is the correct choice and the other one will likely get you damaged. There's little things like that that um, it might take you on your own two or three runs to learn the level so that you can finish it. Um, no level took me more than six or seven tries to complete and that was at worst. Most of the levels took me two or three runs to complete. And I don't consider myself very good at shmups. You might call me a liar. Uh, I've never been that good at them. So I don't really, uh, I don't really feel like this is overly difficult. In fact, I feel like it's easier than the two to one ratio tell says it is. But maybe you'll have a different experience. You can always reach out to me with any questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. But we're gonna uh, run you through uh, the tutorial here and the introduction, the menus, and stuff like that to give you the basics of what you're going to experience. So this is the main menu. You have all of the missions down below. As you can see, we're on my main account, and I have unlocked all of the levels. Um, you get an achievement f for completing the tutorial. 
And then you get an achievement for completing every one of Mission 1 through Mission 17. Um, when you finish the tutorial, you can actually skip the prologue if you want to. It's just like a minute or two of story, and it brings you directly into Mission 0, which is like a 45-second mission with no enemies. I think there's a power-up or two, so I do recommend playing Mission 0 so that you get the power-ups before you jump into Level 1, or Mission 1. It automatically brings you to Mission 1 when you finish Mission 0. So. Um, we're going to run through the tutorial together, and then I recommend jumping into Mission Zero if you don't really care about the story. There's not... Um, I didn't find anything about it overly interesting. I don't want to be disrespectful to the dev, but the story wasn't really my primary uh, interest as I was going through the game. So, um, at the top here, you see our rank. That just goes up as you go through the game. It doesn't really correlate with anything. Um, at... I think it's... Mission 5, Mission 7, Mission 11, and 13, you unlock rewards. The first two at Mission 5 and Mission 7 are new ships. We start with the uh, captain rank over here, and we'll unlock the colonel at Mission 5 and the general at Mission 7, I believe. And uh, it does dic say that they're low, medium, and high speed. I didn't notice a lot of difference, but I wasn't paying a lot of attention. I just moved to the next ship whenever I unlocked it. So that's how I recommend going through. Once you get the colonel, use it. Once you get the general, use it and stick with the general for the rest of the game. You can ch change the color of them as well if you want to. And then uh, just real quick, I'll show you the bonus features over here where it tells you if you don't have these unlocked, it'll tell you, you unlock this at mission 5, etc., etc. So you get the first two ships, and then you unlock uh, illustrations and unused concepts and art. And then you unlock another game mode. None of this has anything to do with achievements, but I'm showing it off just in case. And then finally, there is the options menu. Uh, I played everything on low settings just because um, graphics have never been that big of a thing for me. So... Um, your game might look a little bit different than mine, depending on how the graphic settings are enabled, and as well as the filters, if you choose to enable them, because I played with no filter, because my eyes are terrible. Um, there is a difficulty down in the bottom left. I do believe easy is the default, but you might want to double check that. And then up here, you're going to want to enable the radar. Um, as you go left to right on the screen, most of the enemies are going to come from the right side of the screen, typical shmup thing. But there are some that come from the back, um, and enabling the radar causes like a red line and warning or some text, I can't remember what it is, to pop up behind you when an enemy is going to spawn behind you. It's just a kind of a feature to make it a little bit easier for you, and I recommend doing so. Um, other than that, everything else here is kind of preference. Uh, I do recommend easy and the radar, and you can use whatever settings you're comfortable with. So let's go back to the mission screen, and we're going to start the tutorial and jump into the basics of the game here. Um, left to right, shmup, although in the tutorial we're not really doing anything. Left stick moves us around, right stick aims, and the right trigger fires. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll notice we have an A weapon, a B weapon, and a C weapon. You can use the bumpers to s switch between the three weapons. And that's basically the gist of the controls there. You can also use the B button to fire your D weapon, which we currently do not have, but we'll get one in a second there. Um, at the bottom of the screen there, we have a support turret currently. Don't get comfortable with the support turrets. The tutorial kind of makes it seem like you're always going to have one of those. They only show up like 10 times throughout the game. And most of the time they're static. There is one or two that follow along with you for a little bit. But don't rely on the turrets because they do not stay around very often. Uh, we'll go over the power-ups there at the upper portion of the screen now. So we have... Our A weapon is a Gatling gun. As you can see, it's very, fairly straight and powerful, but it doesn't spread out very much. We have our B weapon, which is our split laser, which can be focused at close range, but spreads out. 
very good for crowd control, and this is actually the weapon I recommend you use as you go through the game. And then you have your missiles, which I don't recommend the missiles. As you can see there, um, we're having some trouble hitting the enemies coming down the center of our missile path. Because we have no control over where the missiles come out. If you're watching, there doesn't seem to be much of a pattern as to whether they go up or down or whatever. It's not really all that useful, so I don't use the missiles very much. Um, I tend to use primarily the split laser, although you're in the videos you're going to be watching, it was my first playthrough and I knew nothing about the game. So you see me start off using the Gatling gun a lot. I recommend starting off with the split laser. Uh, because of the spread of it, it helps you deal with crowd control when there's a lot of enemies and projectiles on the screen. As you can shoot enemy projectiles, I would say like 98% of the enemy projectiles can be shot. And maybe the one or two that I'm thinking of I couldn't shoot were just because I suck at aiming. So uh, you can shoot most of the bullets that get fired at you. And uh, because of that, I recommend the split laser here. Um, because when enemies get in close, then you're still uh, hitting with the power of the Gatling gun at close range, but you can protect yourself if multiple projectiles are coming in, or enemies. So, the power-ups are... I'm not sure if they're random or if they spawn in predetermined positions. I'd have to run through a level a couple of times to see if I get the same ones. But we're going to start with the Class D, because the Class D is uh, something you have to pick up. You don't have a, a basic Class D weapon like we do the A, B, and C there. So we're picking up a Cluster Bomb, and there are probably three or four different D-Class power-ups that you can get. And as you see, we have three of them. So we fire a Cluster Bomb, it's just a missile that goes out and drops some bombs behind it. Um, you can also get a mine one and another type of bomb or missile. I can't remember what it was called. I recommend avoiding the mine one at all costs. Um, the mine one drops a column of mines. And the problem is you're moving left to right. So if you drop a column of mines and 90% of the enemies are coming from the right side of the screen, the mines aren't going to help you a whole lot. Um, even if you drop the mines and back up, you're only going to have a couple of seconds where they're on the screen. So the mines weren't very useful for me, for me personally. Maybe you find a better use for them. But I recommend trying to avoid the mine power-up unless you find a better uh, use of it than I did. Um, all of the other ones, if you can, I recommend holding on to them until the bosses. Um, I went through most of the levels using just the basic split laser and holding the power-ups from all the other class weapons for bosses. And that is very important because the bosses can destroy you very quickly and the bosses are at the end of the level. Because of how the game is designed, you get five hit points per level, but hearts don't really show up to replenish your health very often unless you're extremely low on health and it's still not a very high percentage. So what I recommend doing is using the split laser non-stop. If you happen to get a B-class power-up, just keep using the B-class weapon until you run out of ammo. And as you're going through the level, pick up the C-class and A-class power-ups and save them as well as the D-class if you do come across them for the bosses so that you can obliterate the bosses as quickly as possible. Um, I'm just going to show off the C-Class. The C-Class is the most powerful, in my opinion. Um, I always... You, if you watch my videos, you'll notice I switch to the C-Class immediately when we get to bosses, and sometimes that's all that is needed, is one C-Class power-up and the bosses are dead. Um, if the C-Class doesn't finish a boss, I will switch then to the A-Class and use that on the boss. And any uh, D-class weapons that I had, the cluster bomb here, I would just unload. And then switch back to the split laser if the boss was still alive, because the split laser allows me to shoot the projectiles that are being fired at me, but also stay back at a distance. That's kind of my strategy for going through the game. And as I said, most of the levels only took a try or two for me to get through them. 
Um, there's not a lot more to it. Uh, there are a couple of levels, I think I covered this already, uh, that don't have bosses. So um, I do recommend uh, checking that text walkthrough on my website, just so you know ahead of time if you're going to be dealing with a boss or not. Um, but for the most part, you're going left or right, you have an entire level to survive, and then you have to fight a boss at the end. What we don't see on this level is the hearts, which I've already mentioned, hit points. In the upper left-hand corner next to the laser gun, normally you have five hearts when you start a level. That's a hit point. You get hit once you lose a heart. Um, if you lose all five hearts, you fail the level and have to restart. The good news is you just restart on the level you were at. You can get to level five without dying, and then you die, and you can restart at level five. The bad news is, if you clear a level and move on to the next one, it does not refill your heart. So if you manage to squeak by a boss with one heart, you're going to be starting the next level with one heart. Now, uh, as I've said, just the experience of playing a level is pretty useful for avoiding obstacles for the next time you play, but often it's best to just fly into a wall when you start the next level so you can restart with all five hearts. Um, the likelihood of you getting through a level with one heart is not very high, so it's kind of up to you if you want to attempt it or just, as I said, run into a wall so you can restart levels with five hearts instead of being very stressed out about getting hit once or twice. Um, hearts do come, uh, do drop. I don't know if it's from enemies or if the game just decides you're low on health, here's a heart, but I don't recommend relying on them. Um, more often than not, once you get below three hearts, so if you have one or two hearts left, you'll start to see hearts pop popping up on the screen. And often if I got to the boss arena with one or two hearts, I would see a heart spawn inside the boss arena. So the game does give you some hearts, but I wouldn't recommend relying on them, and you're never, almost never, going to be able to get back to five hearts after you get damaged. Um, very, very rarely do you see hearts when you have three or four hearts remaining. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, the game I didn't feel was overly difficult. Again, I don't consider myself to be a good shmup player, but I was still able to get through all the levels. Um, there are a couple of levels that caused me more trouble than others, and I will be pointing that out in the text version of this walkthrough. So recommend you give that a look. If you have any questions or comments for me, as always, you can reach out to me and I will do my best to answer them. But if not, I will see you guys next time.